All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the European Volleyball Show. My name is Rob St. Clair, and the next iteration of our series of player interviews leading up to the Super Finals of Champions League in Ljubljana. And we have a very special guest joining us. He is a three-time winner of the CEV Champions League, and he has rejoined Trentino this year on the men's side to try and recapture a fourth Trentino Champions League. Mr. Matej Kaziski, welcome to the show. It's great to have you. Thank you. It's great uh, to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation, and I'm happy to be here and to answer your questions. Great. Well, it's great to see you again. It's great to see you back in Trentino after after all this time. The the club where you really kind of made made one of the prominent marks in your career, winning three Champions Leagues in a row: 2009, 10, and 11, and then just playing all over the world of volleyball since. You've now come back to Trentino this year, and here you are, sure enough, right back in the Champions League finals. And we were talking right before the show started about how incredible it is that even despite all the things that have changed since last year, including yourself coming back, that everything has lined up pretty much the same way in terms of the Champions League competition. Trentino, again, you got past Berlin in the quarterfinal, you got past Perugia in the semifinal, and you're going to get a chance to play Zaxa in the final. It was the exact same thing as last year. So as, as with all that's changed, it's remarkable how things stay the same. What's, what's, I guess we can start off. What's your perspective on that, the, the difference from last year to this year, having come in in this offseason? Well, uh, as you said, it's an incredible story to, to tell. Even even uh, till just uh, this point, that everything is like kind of repeating itself. And uh, of course, uh, we would love not to repeat the final results. But uh, for everything else, I'm really really happy because uh, uh, after the big change in our team, I nobody expected us to to go again so far. And uh, for us, it's a, a first uh, a little surprise and a big big achievement. A big achievement because uh, uh, it's a great thing uh, with uh, a com not completely but almost new team to arrive at the same place and to have the same chance and to do the same route uh, uh, till the final it's incredible and meet the same team in the final and of course now we hope to to change the outcome yes uh, I, I'm sure everybody there in Italy everybody there in Trento after what happened last year going to the finals in, in Verona with no fans in the crowd and losing that championship match to Zaxa. And now here you are back again with another opportunity. It's rare that you get a, a redemption opportunity like that so quickly. So I wanted to ask about, you talked about how much has changed for Trentino this offseason, uh, yourself included, obviously coming back. Tell me about the the preseason for you guys when when this team was getting put together with so much that had changed after last club season and when when this team was start starting to take shape especially in in terms of the lineup that you guys play i'm very fascinated by this because for those of who don't know trentino's lineup all that well they have matei here they have alessandro micheletto who many have seen is one of the great young players in volleyball and then they have daniele lavia who came in this offseason from modena as well all three of those guys play the outside hitter position. And you have Giulio Pinali, who can come in and play a true opposite role. But the lineup that you guys have gone with for most of the year has been with all three of you outside hitters on the floor at the same time. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. So tell me about how that plan came to be. Like, when did Coach Lorenzetti come up with that? Or who came up with that? And how long did it take to learn that system? Well, uh, let's start from the beginning of your question because it's, uh, it's quite a long one. But uh, yeah. when we started, uh, of course, uh, maybe you remember, but um, for whoever that don't, um, just after the finals, it was a little bit of surprise that uh, the old team of Tritino Volley started to collapse and they were in need of new players. And the decision was made to make um, like a different team than the one that was before because the one before was very... Um, very, very equal, like a, a player status, and uh, a lot of very good players on every position. And now they wanted to build something more um, towards the future of the team. And they were like, uh, we need just a few older players and like a bunch of young players to, to play and to, to like uh, be a, like uh, be the, the the foundation of a team for a few years afterwards. And uh, we started like this with not, uh, not great expectations, just to, to rebuild a new team and uh, to make something uh, happen and to see wherever it will lead us. And fortunately for us, we started like with a flying start because we won the Super Cup 
uh, just like the first week of the championship. And from there, like we said, well, we are here to, to build up for the future, but like we are good now, we can do even more. So we went, uh, we went ahead and just uh, continued. Uh, of course, it was not an easy road. We, we participated in the World Championship, in the Italian Cup, the, um, uh, the Champions League, and uh, just finished uh, our participation in the Championship uh, of Italy. Uh, hard road, hard matches. But I think the team is shaping up really great. And as you say, we play most of the time with uh, three outside feeders, switching positions all the time. And uh, this was uh, originally introduced to us uh, with, uh, from the very beginning from the coach. It was an opportunity. And uh, also, the, he said for, for, from the beginning, he said, we have this opportunity to play like this. I've played, the, uh, I've played like this uh, and had a great results in the past. And I think we, we should try this. Maybe it works, maybe not. If it, do, if it doesn't, we can always go back. But uh, we are pretty happy how, how we are going. Uh, yes, that, that's, that's an understatement. You're right. Maybe the expectations for Trentino weren't so high coming into the year because you're right. They built around a slightly younger group of players for the next several years. And then sure enough, like you said, you come out and win the Italian Super Cup. You surprise really the entire world of volleyball. Yeah, but- and like... Wait a minute. <laughs> we might we might, we might not have to wait to uh, wait to be good for a couple of years. We might be able to just do it right now. So then then here you are back in the Champions League finals, and you mentioned the road to get there being so difficult because of so many matches, so many tournaments, so many matches, all the travel. I mean, you guys went to Brazil for Club World Championships, and then came back and immediately played Champions League. I remember that's yeah. extremely difficult to do that. So. In term, especially because you're learning a new system, you're growing a team. How have you dealt with the just the number of matches that you've had to play? How have you dealt with the fatigue and the exhaustion of all that? Well, I I cannot say that uh, it was just uh, a breeze to to go through this because we had our fair share of problems during this time. But uh, I think overall we managed pretty good. We had the uh, uh, not not many injury problems, and that's the key of uh, the whole situation. Because uh, in this kind of uh, long period, one injury can like break you. We yeah. just had a few hiccups and stuff like this, but uh, nothing major. And that's that's really, I think, the big part of uh, of, um, of the luck, if I can say so. But not the luck, but also the the big part of the of the success of our system because we put many many games into it. And we find out a good way, a good balance to, to play with it. That's a great point. You're right. With the, with the lineup that you guys play, one injury could, it might, yeah. it might even ruin your season. So I'm very happy that that has not happened to either of the teams that are in the Champions League finals, really, because it just produces a better match. So looking ahead to the Super Finals, you've got about two and a half weeks to prepare for one match. And that is very interesting because, like you said, you guys are done in Italy now. The only match you have left in your season is the one championship match against Zaxa. And whereas the rest of Champions League has all been two games, a two-game series. With that much preparation time for only one match, how how are you structuring preparing for that? And to make sure that as soon as first serve starts in that championship match, your team is ready to go right away. Well, um, during the last period, we had uh, games every three three days. So for sure, our game time was quite enough. <laughs> now we need to, to think to prepare more physically, especially the first week that we have, uh, because we have to recuperate a little bit of our uh, forces for the, for the one game that we have to play at, at maximum level from the beginning to the end. And uh, that's our focus for the first week. Then we have to, of course, uh, rebuild our uh, stamina, just uh, relax, take it easy, and uh, just put our, our efforts to technically prepare the best for the team. Because, as you said, there are some changes, and it's not the same team, so we will have to, to have a quite different approach to, to this game. So let's talk about the Zaxa matchup because it's one that your team Trentino saw last year, but there have been a lot of changes on both sides. So I actually was just watching them this morning. They're taking part in the Plus League of Finals in Poland right now. Uh, They won this morning against Jaszewski-Wegel, who they also beat in the Champions League semifinals. 
And so their timing coming into the final is going to be different than yours. But the the matchup against them with their three wings, uh, Kachmarek, Slivka, Semenyuk, who are so good, and they're just very good defensively. They don't make any errors. They're a, a unique <laughs> style of team. Yeah, quite strong team. Right, very, very strong, just like last year, but a little bit different. So what have you seen in your early preparations for their team that is different than in the other teams you've played this year, like, say, maybe maybe Perugia or Lube, who you just played, or like these other teams in Italy? Um, well, of course, the, they come from a different championship, and uh, their style is uh, quite different from what we are used to. But uh, nevertheless, we play volleyball, and I think the focus will be who will overpower the other team with serve reception. Yeah. That will be, I, I think, both teams' main uh, main focus. And for sure, uh, we'll have some small kind of surprises one for each other, and we're gonna see it uh, uh, when we step up on the court. Yeah, I don't don't give away any of your secrets yet. We've got we've got a championship to prepare for. I'm glad you brought up serve reception and the way that you can control little matchups because in the semifinal of Champions League that you guys played against Perugia, which I had the pleasure of commentating that series, it was one of the great two match series I've ever seen, and maybe one of the it was it was unbelievable. So uh, I, I want to talk about that series a little bit first, generally. To, to accomplish that, to beat that Perugia team, especially there that second match there on the road, you were able to win a golden set, like 17 to 15. The, the magnitude of that accomplishment, that Perugia team that was built to win every championship there was in Europe, to get that done, what, what, what did that feel like for you, for your fans, for your teammates? Just tell me about that, that win, that emotion. I, I, it's, it's very difficult to describe, but it was amazing, amazing. And not only for us on the court, people in the gym were crazy about it. And people in front of the TV were crazy. I I don't remember ever having so much uh, messages for congratulating us and uh, for people who was so happy after the game in any other uh, circumstances, any other final, the uh, Cups won and stuff like this. So it was uh, really crazy. And uh, not only that, but... Um, I think uh, like the level displayed from the both teams, it was amazing, amazing. Uh, for me to be playing it and to be part of this, it was like uh, gratifying on its own. Not not only about the result, just just the game played was was really fantastic. I agree. That was as high of a level of volleyball as I've seen for what was it. 11 total sets across two matches the level was so high the entire time it was just incredible and one of the things that i thought your team did really really well is pick little service rotations when you think that you have an advantage over the other team or you think that there's a matchup you can exploit a little bit and turn those little advantages into huge runs of points the one that I remember in particular was when Alessandro Micheletto was serving yeah. and he was just doing such great. a good job hooking that serve towards Leon in reception. Yeah. And you guys turned that into huge leads. How do you take so, such a minor little matchup advantage and turn it into a major string of points like that? Well, uh, when we play, when you play against the same team over and over and over again, you kind of get some some small how to say small things that repeat itself and when you find this and you kind of start hammering this little mistake that they are doing than doing you just wait for it to repeat and just know what's happening so you are better prepared than ever and just uh, make it work make it work that's a very good point because you guys played trentino i th- you, you played perugia excuse yeah, me eight times this year you played the I, I, more it, it may have been I, I think it was it was two in Champions League semifinals it was two in Champions League pools it was Coppa Italia finals uh yes. it's Super Cup semifinals yes. and then two in regular season I think it was eight times it's so, so many times against the same team but now you have to prepare for one team who you haven't seen and before one, yes, in one it's, match yeah. it's uh it's kind of different matchup. Uh, one team that we haven't saw at all, because uh, as I said, it's a different championship. And uh, of course, we will see a lot of games that they played and stuff, but it's uh, another team experience in the team life. So we won't be so prepared uh, in game, but for sure, we're going to do our best. That's it. 
So a after all the preparation that you can do, once you get into the match, you only have the duration of one match to yeah. figure out the matchup, get settled, and start to start to execute on the advantages that you have. How can you do that fast enough? That's very. It would be very difficult to to adjust in in that quick of a time span. I'm going to turn back to one of the things that you said. I think the, the, the key here is to start at 100 and then keep the pressure as much as you can till you see and you find where they crack. Mm. That's it. Be, be well prepared, do your best, and like be open-minded to, to, to see where, where they give. And that, I think that's something that your team is built to do extremely well. Put pressure on, identify a weakness, and then run with that. That's I, I just can't wait to watch that unfold in Ljubljana. So another another thing that we of course have to talk about is the fact that you, Matei, have won three of these in your career with Trentino back 2009, 10, and 11. I wanted to ask about the experience that 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 gives you, having done this before at such a high level. Even though it was 10 years ago, what to, how does that help you, and how do you then help your teammates prepare for a match like this? Well. Uh... I think the, the hard season that we have is uh, preparation more than enough for us. Now we have to be like uh, uh, very careful to not, uh, how to say, overburn before the matches. Because, uh, you know, the pressure is building day by day. And uh, now all that we think of, leave and uh, train for is the final. And there are still two and a half weeks. So it's not tomorrow, it's not the day after tomorrow. So we have to take it patiently. And lack of patience could be a big uh, factor here. For sure, uh, we are talking about it and uh, we're gonna do our best to be at our, our 100 or even 110 when uh, the game starts. But uh, of course, pressure can, uh, can trick you in these kind of situations. I think uh, mine and my other colleagues' uh, experience is helping in that situation just to bring down the spirits and keep it professional and keep it like focused for, uh, for our goal. That's, that's a great point and hugely valuable to have that. Can you, is there a story from those Champions Leagues in, back in 2009 to 2011, winning those three tournaments? Is there a story that pops out to you that when you look back on those couple years, a memory that comes up that you can share with us? Something very funny is the, the last one in, um, uh, uh, here near Trento Bolzano. In, uh, hmm? in, in Bolzano, uh, the, the third one is like, I don't know uh, how familiar with the Italian people, that, but they are very superstitious people. <laughs> yes. And uh, going for the last game, just uh, just entering the bus, we were um, departing from our hotel to the, to the gym and the bus broke. So everybody were like uh, crazy disappointed because that's a big sign that uh, things will go wrong. But like, we, we had a good um, uh, hotel owner, hotel, hotel manager, who managed to, to give us uh, three minibuses. So we went to the game perfectly, we won. And, uh, uh, but just, just, just the, the pressure that we had before the game in the moment when the bus was going <laughs> <laughs> stopped and she said, I cannot, I, I don't know what's, what's happening, we, we cannot go. And everybody was like, uh, you know, crazy disappointed and like almost we, we lost it at that moment but eventually we we went to the game and we won so everything went, went fine wow that is incredible what what a nerve-wracking thing that would be to hear yeah. oh, especially yeah. for, a, for a for a population like italians I, I i cannot explain you how superstitious normally they are so events like this is like really breaking nerves wow that, that's that's just a phenomenal story so well, you get you got past that little superstition, I suppose. What from a volleyball perspective, the Champions League era and just the game of volleyball around the year 2010, 2011 versus the game of volleyball now. What would you? What would, I guess? What's start with something that's similar? What's similar now in your in the, the way your team plays, the way you prepare for a Champions League final compared to what to the last time you won one of these? Then we can talk about something that's different after that. Well, we are speaking of a very big uh, time gap, so it's yeah. very difficult to 
to to compare them really w without having Im images. But uh, like uh, generally, volleyball was evolved during that time a lot, and uh, uh, not only just like a play, but generally I also like rules. Now you can see so many pushes, um, attacks with uh, double hands and stuff like this, which yeah. during my time were like. Uh, almost prohibited like you have to do it very clean now the uh, referees permit so much so much going on and uh, just just uh, that aspect alone just uh, change the the play style of outside hitters generally generally you see so much uh, like dirty play we call it like this here in Italy. <laughs> dirty play during uh during the games that uh once upon a time let's say it like this because i'm an older guy but uh, a long time ago it was uh so much, so much. It was much rare to rare. Yeah, yeah. You can see it very rarely during that time, and now it's so prominent. And uh, just this alone changed the game so much. So, just this alone. But to, to just to go back to the similarity, it's always volleyball, and uh, even though the the speed and the strength of the the players is increasing, and the height of everybody is increasing. So much lately. Uh, I think uh, generally the, the accent still is on the good side out and break break with serve. Yep, some things about that at the highest levels of men's volleyball yeah. will never change. If you can serve yeah. and you can receive serve and run your offense, you are in any era you're going to be in pretty good shape to win. So the last thing I want to ask about before we before we wrap up the show and thank you again, Matej, so much for for your time and for being here is the the so we're going to slovenia in two weeks till you'll be honored to play this final it's a neutral site so it, it's not i i don't know how what like what distribution of the fans to expect from poland versus from italy versus you know just volleyball fans but i i hope that you be a good battle through fans also I, of yeah. course very polite one but i i hope uh, since it's not very far away, uh, neither to Poland, neither to us, it will be uh, a good destination to have a great final, even uh, for the fans. Exactly. It is kind of kind of close enough to both Italy and to Poland. But the big difference, especially compared to last year, was that there were no fans last year. Yeah, now there will be fans, and that's incredible. I, I cannot stress how, how important this is for, for us players. And for me personally, I think this changed the whole flavor of the game. But not only for who plays it, also for who watches it. It's just so much different. It's so much more spectacular. And you can feel so much more engaged during the games. I couldn't have said that better myself. I completely agree. It's it's totally changed even the uh, way I watch volleyball from the other side of the world this whole season to feel and hear the energy of the crowds returning to volleyball arenas. It's so good to see. And like that that Champions League semifinal where you beat Perugia at home, that crowd in that match, that was amazing. that was among the best I have ever seen. And that makes a very big difference. Uh, and just just the, the way you you feel in the court when there are so many people cheering for you is just so much different. It's, it cannot be described on word, but it's it's really make big, 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 big difference. Well, if you want to be a part of the crowd and the atmosphere that Matei is talking about, you can still get tickets to the Super Finals in Ljubljana, Slovenia on May 22nd, but the Men's and the Women's Champions League final going down that same day. If you can be there, you're going to want to be there. Uh, that will be the as good of an atmosphere in sports as you'll ever see in the world. So check out CEV.eu for information on tickets on that. And we'll do a lot more breakdowns and a lot more previews of both the men's and women's super finals as they continue to get closer. Matej Kaziski, thank you so much for being with us, man. The best of luck in your preparation for the finals. And we can't wait to watch you on that stage in Slovenia. Thank you very much for having me. And I hope to see you soon. Yes, we will. Thanks.